Welcome to the narrow boat that James built. Hope you're very well. Thanks for joining me. Well, the narrow boat aficionados amongst you will recognise that the flue here is not quite in its normal position. The reason for that is because last night we had rain and the rain was coming down the side of the flue because the collar's not installed properly. Um, so I had to remove the flue and replace it with a washing up bowl which worked fine. Not as fine as installing the flue in the collar correctly with Sikaflex so that the rain doesn't come in, but this needs to be trimmed down and uh, Paul and I are gonna get to that today, hopefully, and then we can get the, uh, the fireplace installed properly. Um, but today's video really um, is born out of hundreds of comments I've had over the last couple of months, um, and now's the time to tackle it partly because lots of shops are shut and I've hit a bit of a wall with many things, but also because um, I've just done all of my numbers, my budgets, um, so I know where I am. So this video is all about how much the boat is gonna cost, how much it has cost, what my budgets are, and what I've spent. So if you cast your mind back to October last year now, uh, so three months ago, um, on the first video I was explaining my predicament if you like of buying a narrow boat if you've got 80 grand or 60 grand even or even 40 grand you can pretty much go out and you've got quite a broad spectrum of boats to look at um, at the top or end of the market you can look at Y beams um, brand new boats take somewhere get them fitted out um, you know you can buy a brand new boat for 40 grand and get it fitted out for 40 so yeah there you go um, but at my end of the market it's not that simple um, to get on the waterways for kind of sub 20 grand um, you've either got to get bloody lucky or you've got to put a lot of work in um, or buy yourself something really kind of small um, but I needed something which was suitable, something which was big enough, um, comfortable enough to live on um, and still within budget. So at the time I was looking, there wasn't that much. Uh, there was about 15, 20 boats around the country um, which were kind of in a position that I could do something about them. I, I, I didn't want to take on something which was you know a rusted shell uh, that was that was a that was definitely a no-go in fairness I didn't even think I'd take on anything like this I was expecting to do some work to it for, for sure but I wasn't expecting to having to take it all the way back to a shell so this came as a little bit of a surprise um, obviously I've been fortunate because we've been working from home for the last few months so I've had a lot more kind of available time if you like to do that uh, but in a normal world, well, that, that would have been nearly impossible uh, to get it done in any kind of sensible time frame. Okay, so let's start with the boat itself. So she's a 43 foot Springer built in 1971. And it's what I really wanted was two main things. Hatches, of which this boat's got three, and a cruiser stern, of which this boat's got a nice big one. That was for me, the most important thing. And given the fact that value is only something that someone is willing to pay, um, it's extremely subjective. Um, I paid 12,000 pounds for this boat. If it was listed on hard standing in London at 16, I'd have paid 16 for it. In the same way, if it was listed on hard standing in Wales for four grand, I wouldn't have looked at it because it needed to be accessible. And given the fact that when you're buying a narrow boat, it could be anywhere in the country. It's not like you're buying a house where you're looking at a few streets or a few towns, maybe. A narrow boat could be anywhere. This one for me ticked all the boxes and relatively, it was fairly close. Um, it's on the same stretch of canal that London's on. That's close for me. One of the important things for me on this uh, project on the budget was for the overall cost of the boat and a year's worth of kind of living on it to be comparable to renting a 
kind of one two bed flat or whatever in in, in around London, um, which is about 25 grand a year, 20, 25 grand a year. So really what I'd kind of, uh, I'd be essentially quids in if I could have a boat for 20, 25 grand and live on it for two years, great, quids in. So that was the, um, that was the kind of uh, the fag packet maths going into it. Um, not to mention obviously the lifestyle and everything like that was obviously extremely appealing, but it was also, you know, had to be economically viable. Okay, so we know the boat cost 12,000 pounds. Straight away I got a survey done, that cost 500 pounds. The BSC, the boat safety certificate, cost me 150 pounds. Obviously that was the same guy I did the survey. He has, um, he's obviously done it as it was. The spray foam insulation uh, cost £700. The anodes and the welding cost £400. Stern gland, okay, it's not quite finished yet, but it's going to be, it's going to come in there or thereabouts at £1,000. And the, ha the hard standing and, or being on the cut for five months at North Kilworth is 500 quid. So in total, £15,250 has been spent. Now, this is kind of non-subjective stuff, really. You couldn't have done this any cheaper. Well, obviously, you know, different boat or whatever but in terms of what i was dealing with this this is it there are other things you could do where you know if you bring other certain things to the party costs come down or certain different choices costs come down but really on this there's not much else i could have done uh, moving on to the next bit obviously some of this is subjective some people would have all the tools and wouldn't need to spend anything on this so uh, i've had to spend about 800 quid in total on tools and bits and pieces 400 pounds on treatments and paints. That's like things like Vactan, Red Oxide, Bitumen, um, Primer, uh, Wood Stain, all that kind of stuff. Adhesives, spray foam, glue, nails, screws, all of that. Actually, no nails, but millions of screws. Um, most of them unused. Um, 400 quid there. Extras, this is things like um, the gas locker, bits of angle iron and stuff, 500 quid. Timber, okay, I've gone to decent timber yards for my stuff, but £900 there, um, and there's still quite a lot more to go. So in total, another £3,000. Right, so next up is the watery bits. So this includes the pumps, the tank, the pipes, um, build pumps, uh, whale gulpers, all that kind of stuff. So £600 there. The shower enclosure in... Uh, tray that I've chosen is 350 in total the toilet I've gone for a simp blue I'll uh, that should be coming any day now so I'll show you that one out obviously that comes but that's 350 quid the hobs the fridge and the oven 100 well 1100 obviously that's pretty subjective there's lots of different ones you can have there the stove well blimey the stove was actually 320 or something but all the other bits you need for it like the flue and the collar and um, the, all the special paint and the special adhesive and the special this and the special that, um, 800 quid. But that does, in, in fact, that also includes all the stuff for the fireplace as well. So the CS board and the cement board uh, is included in that. Gas install, I've got uh, What's This Chops coming on Tuesday to do my gas install. So that'll be 400 quid there or thereabouts for a day's work for him. So another 3,600 quid spent there. And then finally, some of this has been spent, some of it's yet to be spent, um, but needless to say, this is what it's going to be. So the boiler, I'll come on to this on another video, but um, my cost for the boiler will be about a thousand quid roughly. Solar and electrics, I've obviously spent some of this, things like LED down lighters, um, bits and pieces like that, uh, conduit and stuff, but all of that, all in total is 1200 quid. I said I've still got £500 worth of timber to buy, things for like the dinette, more of the bedroom, flooring, ceiling, walls, that kind of stuff. Paint, uh, that is for mostly for the outside. Uh, there's obviously some in internal paint that will be required, but that stuff's pretty cheap. It's the outside stuff, which is expensive. There's still some more metal work for Paul to be doing, uh, so it's about 500 quid's worth there. Um, craneage, it probably won't be as much as that. I'm hoping to share it with somebody um, but worst case scenario, it's going to cost a thousand quid and the pram hood is probably going to cost more than a thousand quid, but I don't dare write any more uh, for the sake of my sanity. So, um, and that's going to have to be some, well, 
ideally it'd be any time now, but budget wise, it's most likely going to be uh, next uh, you know, sometime later on this year. So there's another 5,700 quid there. Uh, and you've just meant you've just seen it there. The shocking total. Well, I say that it's 27,550 so far. One of my aims uh, with the boat was to have living accommodation um, in and around London, which was going to be affordable, um, certainly on a monthly basis, uh, actually pretty much only on a monthly basis in terms of the capital costs of buying it. Um, as long as I wasn't buying a, an absolute wreck, it should always kind of look after itself in terms of the capital value. Um, some of them do appreciate, but um, I thought kind of going into it, if you buy something for 20, then that's what it is. It's worth 20. It's the the, the monthly ongoing living costs. That's what I wanted to be to be low. OK, so we know the total boat costs 27,350. The licence fee for me is 875, uh, which is obviously for the canal network as a constant cruiser. Insurance, roughly about 300 quid. RCR membership, this is really important. Um, they will come and kind of rescue you wherever you are, whatever's happened to you. Um, it's very good value for money. Uh, it's also kind of a must to have. Um, but also included within the some of the memberships, they come out and they do like a yearly service on your boat or on your engine and things like that. So that I'll benefit I'll benefit from there from that as well. Uh, approximate diesel about fifteen hundred quid. Obviously, there's tax implications coming in next year um, with the difference between uh, red diesel. But um, yeah, fifteen hundred quid that might change. Who knows if it's if it's going to change? It's going to change because of holidays. And therefore, if I'm taking the boat away on holiday, then I'm going to be saving on not going on holiday in some other capacity. So if that goes up to two grand a year, then I'm saving 500 quid elsewhere anyway. So that's fine. And again, approximate gas, um, there's going to be, I don't know how much that's going to spend. And again, things like coal, you know, it's a, but it's not much money. It's a few quid. But this is where it gets interesting. So year one costs... So the cost of the boat and everything like that and all of this stuff, 30,500 quid, let's call it. Year two, though, on the basis that, you know, you haven't taken the boat out of the water and this that, and the other, your cost is just that, or my cost will be just that, three grand a year. Let's say year three, another bit of maintenance. So in total, after three years, you're kind of talking about 40 grand's worth of costs in total, which is very good value for money if you compare it to anything else you can live in in the southeast for what's that 13 grand a year over three years a one bed place hopefully fairly immaculately done nice and warm and cozy outside space no council tax cheap bills then it starts to add up and stack up because it does look a bit scary because for 27 grand you can buy yourself a much better boat than a 1971 Springer but I know what I've got now I know it's well when it's finished I'm I'm hoping it's gonna be half decent okay we don't know if it floats yet but we're assuming she does So there we have it. Um, that's the uh, the costs and the budgets um, and how it all works. Uh, I'll do another one of these maybe in six months time or something like that to uh, to update again as to uh, what the ongoing costs are, because as you said, some of them have been estimated. Um, but uh, yeah, overall, that's what it's that's what that's what I'm in for. Um, so I said, I hope that's been useful and informative. Um, any questions, please put them in the uh, comments box below and I'll do my very best to get back to them. Thank you for watching. Take care. Bye bye.